my continued free agency, April 2014, um, I'd like to take a moment to talk about Utah Bowling Balls, and that would be Storm Products and Rotogrip. Storm is a, is a company that's been very, very good to me over the years, uh, throughout my career, and then even before my career, I worked the sales booth, uh, Syracuse, New York, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and Rio, Nevada at the national tournament. Uh, and, that, and that's where I, under the mentorship of, of Steve Klemkin, uh, that I've learned the most about ball drilling, uh, layouts, weight blocks, covers, uh, and it's really helped me out along the way uh, throughout my career as well as in the pro shop. So thank you Storm for giving me some product to try out. And um, what we're gonna look at today is the Rotogrip Hypercell, the Storm IQ Tor Fusion, the Rotogrip Uproar, a 2010 old high road from the basement, and the new high road Pearl. I'd like to start off uh, in do this in an order of, of which I would be using these. Uh, what we have out here today is a 41 foot, um, fairly high volume house pattern. Um, so uh, the first ball out of my bag would be this Hypercell. Uh, what I've got is just a typical Chuga drill, pin underneath the bridge, mass 20 degrees out to the right. Um, just a, a, a layout that reads the body uh, and continues through the back of the lane. I uh, hit this ball with 2000 and some polish because it seemed so aggressive I had to get a little bit of retention out of it, get a little further down the lane with a, with a little less hook. Um, and so far I'm, I'm really impressed with it because even with some polish on it, uh, it still reads the body of the lane very heavily uh, and continues. So uh, I'd like to monkey around with this one for a little while. Now, as I am learning a new ball, um, I'm really not focusing on where I'm standing or a target. I'm pretty much just, uh, just fidgeting. Uh, maybe I'll get my hand around it a little more. Maybe I'll get my hand at the back of it a little bit more, soften up my speed, uh, change my trajectory, because I want to learn how to use this ball. Um, and uh, you know, a condition like this, which is pretty generous uh, and forgiving. Uh, it allows me to really flirt, so to speak, with, uh, with some different tricks. There's one thing I see about this ball already is that it has a nice combination, which is uh, kind of unique. It's, it's very heavy rolling, but yet still shows a lot of angularity in the back end. I think that's gonna make it uh, a little more versatile going through transition because I think it retains energy a little bit better. Well, thank you, Steve Klemkin. This one's definitely going in the bag as the go-to ball on heavy oil. One thing that's been consistent throughout the years uh, with storm balls is their ability to retain energy uh, while crossing traffic. Uh, and that's one of the big things in competitive bowling. Uh, is as, the, as the lanes break down, uh, you, need, you need that retention to be able to create angle in the back end. And storm balls have always done that very well. Uh, I've been very impressed watching this, this IQ Tour Fusion uh, over the last couple months. Uh, so I had to, had to order one of those on April 1st uh, because it just looks so good. Um, differential in the 30s. So I drilled it just a little bit stronger than a typical Chuga drill. Another uh, 15 degree swing to the right and a pin just a little bit more aggressive towards my axis. Uh, should be about four and three quarters. Um, so this could be one of those benchmark balls that I should be able to use a lot of different ways. Uh, and that's what I'm gonna do today is just kind of monkey around, go uh, between the first and second arrow all the way to the fifth arrow, wrap my hand around it, go up the back, all those kind of different things. So let's just see how versatile this thing, this thing is. Pretty confident I'll be able to use this ball a lot of different ways. Uh, playing straight, getting in there and booming it. Um, just a, a solid benchmark ball. 
This is definitely a ball that's going to appeal to a lot of different styles. And uh, I'm going to have a lot of confidence with this thing in the pro shop, selling it to, to a lot of different guys and that I could see it being their favorite ball for sure. Well, I can't say how excited I was on April 1st to run into my basement and see that uh, I had a couple high roads uh, in really good shape. This one's a, a 2010. Uh, you can see that from the, from the serial number on storm balls that the first two digits are, are the year. Uh, so this is a, a 2010 four-year-old high road uh, pin above the bridge, a little bigger swing to the right with an extra hole. This has always been one of my benchmark balls. Um, thought it was going to kind of monkey with this today. Kind of see how it compares to that IQ Tour Fusion. Guess that that high road motion uh, doesn't seem to be anything special, but it just works. Ball just always seems to pick up the lane in the right spot. It just does it the right way. That ball is amazing. It's been on the market so long, longer than anything that I can think of, and it still sells. It still performs. Uh, a lot of balls that are that old can't really uh, read the, the newer oils the right way, and and this one just always seems to do it right. Uh, an old high road, as far as hook potential, pretty close to the IQ Tour Fusion. Um, but there's just something special about that high road motion. Let's look at the high road pearl. Uh, oh, just a pearlized version of the hybrid uh, high road. Uh, it should be a little longer down the lane, a little snappier in the back end. Um, gave it a slightly different layout than the original high road. Just a little more of a stack. I didn't swing the CG out as much to the right, which should get me a little bit more length than a lane, a little snap off of the off the end of the pattern rather than the gradual accelerating arc of the high road. So, let's see if she dances in the back end. So as you can see, I can create some serious angle down the lane with this high road pearl. Very, very clean through the front, through the body of the lane, and very responsive to the try. It's not going to be an all day, every day ball, but it will serve a purpose. When the lanes get chopped up and you need to create angle down lane, high road pearls would be a pretty good one to go to. The next ball I'd like to talk about is the Rotogrip Uproar. Uh, West Malott beat my brains in at the Masters this year, throwing this ball. And when April 1 came, I had to make sure I got my hands on one. This ball looks like it's very clean through the front uh, and not all that aggressive, but it still reads the body of the lane well. Um, and just out of common sense, told me, why don't you just drill it like Wes's? So I put the pin up above the middle finger, swung the CG out to the right, put a hole about four and a half inches over uh, to do, again, accentuate what this ball is supposed to do. Clean through the front, read the body, and continuous on the back end. I really like the control of the body to lane that I get with this ball. It's not all that aggressive, uh, but it controls the body to lane uh, very well for later in the days when there's a little more traffic, I can kind of open up my angles to the right, give it a flick to the right, and know that it's not gonna scoot too long or be too snappy. It really gives me nice control of the body of the lane. Well, thank you, Steve Klemkin. Uh, I've got a pretty nice array of balls here. I've got heavy oil, uh, a couple of good benchmark balls, uh, as well as uh, some balls when the lanes are a little beat up, and a uh, variety in that. I've got one that's extremely long and snappy, uh, and another one that's clean that gives me good control of the body. So uh, I've got five tools here that are definitely making its way into my arsenal. Thank you very much, Storm.